welcome, welcome, welcome. Streaming, streaming, streaming. <laughs> Let me know when you're recording. Uh, yeah, it's streaming now. So we are on the Twitch. All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome to EMX episode 93, brought to you by our Patreon subscribers. If you want to subscribe to Patreon, head to www.patreon.com slash EMPcast, where you can help support the show, help us keep the lights on, and also get some goodies out of it, some comics, if you subscribe long enough, some sketches, some mugs, and just other kind of cool stuff. And who doesn't like cool stuff? Exactly. Yeah, I, I am a big fan of cool stuff. Yeah. I am, I am cool stuff. <laughs> Oh, yeah, there, there you go. That's, you know, he's not wrong. Yeah. And uh, uh, we, I guess, uh, patrons know about our uh, our EMBS episodes uh, that that you get. Uh, you get as soon as we finish recording them. Uh, but our buddy Rich, Richard, Richard West, uh, was a guest on EMBS, and he decided... To be a patron, so let's let's thank uh, our buddy Richard West. Thank you Yay. very much. Hey. We appreciate it. Hell yeah! Helps pay for hosting and pay for shipping of all the swag, and you know since since uh, Alex is is uh, is getting a hold of Alex is like hurting cats. <laughs> um, Sometimes. I have several. I have several cats, and yeah. hurting them is easier exactly. than getting uh, a hold of Alex. The money. I love I, you, buddy. I think. Yeah, I think we should just. Uh, I think. I think from now on, we're we're going to just. Um, uh, we're just going to say like a sketch from one of our one of our many artist friends. That way, uh, you know, I mean, like our patrons have been super patient, and awesome, for supporting us this long. But I just don't want to push our luck, <laughs> so just just want to get put put options out there, and I I do need to change that on the Patreon. But yeah, you can get sketches from our art friends. You can get custom toys by me, uh, and you'll get mugs and comics and all kinds of stuff. So yeah, what have you guys been up to? I actually got the. To to do a convention last weekend. <laughs> what? Nice. Wait, 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 Convention? Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a new thing where people that like, you know, comic books and nerd shit uh, all get together in a building and some of them like sell items, you know, goods and services related to those things while others peruse and what? enjoy said things. I know. It's a new thing. We're working it out. Okay. Um, but yeah, no, I was in uh, I was in Huntsville, Alabama, which is not very far from where I am. So it was sort of like a half convention experience because I could drive home every night. Oh, um, nice. But no, yeah, uh, no, it no was no room and board. Not having yeah, to pay it was, room and board. So yeah. and, and it was it was surprisingly um uh well, I guess not surprisingly, but it was well attended and uh you know, they were having everyone wear masks and you know, I'd say about half of them, uh, half of the people there were, you know, actually were wearing them and wearing them correctly. So, I mean, that's <laughs> some something. of them were, were cosplaying just with their mask, right? Like I, I saw those uh, Mandalorian cosplayers and stuff. I was like, that's practical and cool. <laughs> you know, you know what I found bizarre, though, is that like there were a lot of people just like cosplaying other stuff that don't that doesn't have masks. And I'm like. Now, now's your chance. Like I saw a guy and I don't know if this was just like, you know, being sort of deliberately funny. He was in the full Deadpool get up, but then he had a mask. <laughs> nice. On top of over that. Yeah. His mask. thing. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, I don't, why, why are you doing that? That's okay. I'm like, yeah, this could just be a Deadpool thing. I don't know. <clears throat> Whatever you, you, you do you homeboy, you do you. Um, but yeah, like, you know, obviously there's a lot of Mandalorians because that's, you know, people, people are very fond of, you know, of that. Um, but yeah, I just, 
I, I just find it puzzling. Like, like there was a dude, he was dressed up like a uh, Cobra infantry dude from, uh, you know, from GI Joe. And those guys have like, they had, they had masks in the eighties. Like they were pioneering mask technology. Um, and I was like, all right, yeah, that's great. You're incorporating the mask into, you know, what, what you're doing. That's great. So cosplayers do more of that. I feel like you're going to be a lot happier. And also you won't look like a jerk for just not wearing a mask. Yeah. We don't like jerks. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. And Viet, what have you been up to? Uh, just lots of commissions. <laughs> Lots and lots of commissions. Uh, that's about it. Uh, I I mentioned it again. If you were a patron, you would have already known. But I did get my first shot. Of, of, I'm on. I'm in the Moderna mob. Apparently, that's that's what I've heard <laughs> the 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 internet's <laughs> say. Mama, 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 Moderna. Yeah, <laughs> like I wonder if there's gonna be like discrimination, like like a bunch of like gang wars. Is like, oh yeah, we 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 don't mess with those Pfizer sexuals. <laughs> <laughs> J and J for life, son. J and J for life. One shot. Like fucking Hamilton up in here. That's all I need is one shot. Oh jeez. One shot, no blood clot. Boom. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it, it was it was kind of weird. I'm a man and um, science is weirdly, you know, yeah. no misogynistic. Blood. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad you don't have any clots of the blood. Yeah. Sure. But yeah. Uh, other than that, uh, yeah, just been staying busy. Um, there's a uh, just a heads up to let people know. Uh, there's this uh, miniature game, like a uh, or a board game with miniatures that uh. Some, a Marvel called Marvel United, and there's a Kickstarter for their X Men expansion, and uh, that looks pretty cool. And since we're doing an X Men episode, I should let people know about it. And like the miniatures look super cute, and I'm I'm getting all of them, and I'm gonna paint every single one of them, and it's gonna be awesome. But uh, yeah, it's it's something like they their goal was like three hundred thousand. And they're like 1.5 million <laughs> now. Get the gee whiz. Yeah, so you're just like, I... and it's only been like a little more than a day. It's a little crazy. So when I back it and I get my figures, you're going to paint mine for me too? Sure. I mean... <laughs> actually, I'm, you're going to have to teach me how to start painting because I was looking at some of these 3D printers and they're actually super cheap. I mean... Yeah, they're like in the. I mean, they're they're like in the three hundred dollar range. They're not like yeah. ridiculous anymore. Yeah, exactly. It was like, oh, sh and I saw some of the, I don't know what you want to call them, the the blueprints that people sell, and mm -hmm. they're affordable. I mean, thirty, forty bucks for some of these. Yeah, for the statues. I'm seeing. Yeah, for the modeling and all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah, it's like ridiculous. Yeah, I can teach you how to paint. For sure. Uh, all right, you can just hang out on my streams. <laughs> well that too but you know there's techniques and then there's the different do you over the paints that you use and stuff mm -hmm. like that yeah oh, okay well all you have to do is ask i think i'd rather do it in person since we've been apart for so long oh. yeah <laughs> well we can we, we can have an arts and crafts day Yay. all right so um oh that's your intro go for it yeah so uh welcome Welcome, uh, one and all, to EMX. I am Thatcher E. Cleveland, and uh, with me, as always, is Corwin Kroll. Hello. And Viet Huynh. Hey, hey. And for those of you that don't know, and just been like, why, why are these guys just talking about random stuff? We're not talking about random stuff. We got a goal. We got a purpose here. And that purpose is going to tell is going to be going through one hour of uncut uncensored and unscripted conversation about the X-Men books that were published in March of 2021. Now there will be spoilers um, and hang on to your seats. Cause Corwin, you got that, you got the timer ready, ready. Okay. See, this is why I ask. I almost didn't ask, but then I was like, you know, you know, it feels like it's been a while. It's our, 
Yeah, it's it's our it's our gimmick for a reason. You know, we got to have that timer. Come on, man. All right, Time, timer's ready. And now it's starting now. Go, go, go. Berserker Barrage. Berserker Barrage. So, Corwin, I'm going to put you on the spot since you didn't have the the timer up and ready. What uh, what what do you what do you want to start with? I've I've had this more than ready because we're going to talk about X Men 19. Yeah, I, I had a feeling that that was going to be the first one. <laughs> Because there's a lot to go through. And especially since I texted you guys when I read the issue, I'm like, did you guys read it yet? Did you guys read it yet? <laughs> like, like, you know I read these books like the day of. <laughs> right? I, 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 actually, I read them. I read like half of them yesterday. So I, I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a bit of a go-getter. Um, yeah. Yeah. So written by Jonathan Hickman, Hickman, art by Mahmoud Ashrar, uh, colored by Sonny Go and Clayton Cowles on the letters. So this issue is back to the vault where we see what happened with Cinch, uh, Wolverine, and Darwin, and it's full of charts, well, timelines and charts, and just the craziness that these three went through while they're trapped in the world, or not the world, uh, the vault. Love um, it is just the stuff that they go through is just so crazy. And they spent what a century, maybe? Was it 100, yeah, 100 yeah, or 150 they, years. Yeah, that seems like about like what they were, what they were talking about, because it's all narrated from Cinch, and you know him sort of talking about all their experiences, which you know. Wild as hell. Yeah. So they're basically talking about how they survive, had to survive through this place. And over time, the children also have to adapt to deal with them. So there's like three third generations, um, children of the vault. And we see how they change with each iteration. Um, during this time as well, Sinjin Laura, AKA the female Wolverine, kind of grow close and become a couple throughout this thing and then they get captured and separated for like how, how many years did they say um a long ass time <laughs> decades yeah De- yeah decades like maybe 20 years or something like that but eventually they're able to find each other um and eventually they have to find darwin because the children had captured him and basically were experimenting on him and it seems like they atomized him and spread him out through basically all the children of the vault seem to have some parts of his DNA. So we have really yet to see the full fallout of what happens, whether they can spontaneously adapt to whoever they're fighting like Darwin could. But um, it's it's kind of scary. Um, Cinch and Wolverine eventually do make it out, but Wolverine does die trying to get Cinch all the way out so the professor can back up his mind. So even though they all get killed, Xavier is able to, excuse me, save Everett, um, back him up. So as he's reborn, he has all the memories of a, like 120 something years that they were stuck in the vault. Um, and unfortunately, the other two don't. So as much as he knows how close him and uh, Laura have become, she doesn't quite remember it. She doesn't remember any of it, actually. So now it's kind of like it kind of almost ends on a downer with like, you know, him kind of being sad because there's no way for him to really explain their bond. But at the end, she's like, what are you looking at? And from there, he's like, you know what? That's a start. So they kind of flipped it and gave you a nice kind of hopeful ending to it. Well, yeah, at first it was a little, uh, when I was just like, why is he smiling? And then, but then like you can, if you look at his eyes, he kind of looks like a little teary eyed there. (laughs) Like he's about to. Or maybe that's just how he... But I don't know if they did that on purpose. Like, he looks... He looks like... He's just like, this This is fine. <laughs> like the he's like, like the dog I, meme I, I, in the fire. <laughs> not so like, I, I, I did it once. I can do it again. You know, mm-hmm. and it'll be easier. Because we're not being, you know, hunted by crazy super... Like, the looks that they go through... Like, by the way, you know, Everett hopefully he remembers and is like, yeah, I'm going to grow a beard. I'm going to grow a big <laughs> ass beard. Cause he looks dope, 
with the big beard and like especially with the solid gray right in the middle Mm -hmm. that's a hot look dude you definitely mean you'll get the but yeah even yeah and like laura with her you know she almost has like a rogue streak and her like it's it's (laughs) wild even the savage even got this like little savage land rogue look to it yeah i i'm very torn by this issue number one um we'll we'll probably touch on this later but this this begins to touch on a lot of stuff that uh you know stuff that you know has begun to to get me thinking about the x-men books in general but there is definitely a part of me that would love to have see this be more than one issue like a whole you know like a 12 issue thing or a 20 issue thing or something like a a much longer drawn out you know serialized story but the way that he is able to condense everything together you know with the charts and all the other stuff it's pretty that it, it's it's pretty phenomenal in my opinion. It's definitely a testament to Hickman's insane ability to you know chart and graph and plot and all this stuff. Yeah, the yeah when we talk about this book being Hickman AF, this is this issue is Hickman you know, AF. <laughs> it really like I saw I, I saw a thing talking about writing the other day, and one of the things that you know, the, the tips that they were giving new writers is, you know, be, be like an iceberg, like only like you may only need to show that tip in your actual story. Just the tip. But yeah, just the tip, you know, sometimes <laughs> a little more if they're into that, who knows? Um, but then like all of the other stuff, like the backstory and all of those things, like, to, to keep that in mind and know about that so that you're more informed about how your character, like who your characters are and how they behave and all of these things. And I feel like Hickman is crafting the world's largest iceberg with the X-Men stuff. And I, and I mean that in an entirely positive way. Cause it's just like, he, he's, he's gotta have just like data and notebooks and things and plans. And, you know, like the, the, it's always sunny thing where Charlie's like trying to find yeah, out about to Sylvia. Say, yeah. Without you know? the, with the, with the <laughs> red string tied like everywhere. Yeah. And yeah, it's, it's wild. Yeah. Like I, I hope so. And, and, but I, I at the same time, I'm just sort of, I, I think he has full reign this time around but i just hope it's not like like the avengers where like things don't like he, i i just hope he doesn't just forget about this stuff i don't know i don't think he will i mean technology and the oh, i forgot the name of the race that kind of springs forth from humanity and what they become um technology seems to be the enemy here you've got orakis doing their thing with nimrod you've got the children now i remember the very first issue of x-men right orakis had had seraphina captive so they've already Mm -hmm. experimented or got data from them now that they can freaking make a fourth generation of children with whatever they got from darwin if nimrod gets a hold of that that's just like a whole nother thing that they need to worry about so it's really interesting how the technology is really the enemy to to mutants that's a that's a really that's a really i hadn't really thought of it that way but yeah man that's spot on yep because and it and it's interesting too because it goes to because especially when you look at um you know oh gosh what was it the, the dawn of x and like the the first like miniseries that they did with moira um in the powers way it's of, like powers of x and House of X. Yeah. House of yeah. House of X. Um, where it's almost like the parallel evolution of humanity and the mutants and technology into self-aware, you know, machines and whatnot. And that, you know, it's very, it's a very interesting theme to kind of, you know, latch onto with the X-Men. 
like, yeah, I just love this. This is just straight up my alley. This is exactly what I expect and want from Hickman. I just, uh, I really love this issue. Who, who was, yeah. Oh, this is Mamudas, right? Right. Yes. Yeah. I was just like, yeah, gorgeous, gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. I some mean, people, some people don't like him. I'm surprised about that. Say what? Yeah, that. Yeah, that's weird. I mean, it's well, I mean, it's not super stylized, but I mean, he definitely he had he has a specific look, you know, and I, you know, I think that's cool, you know, the 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 look that he has. But I mean, if you don't like it, then you know, I guess you're shit out of luck. Mm-hmm. It's not right. for everybody, I guess. Let's let's move on because I could spend all day on this. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, uh, Thatch. What you got on this? Okay. Let's see. Now, this is almost, uh, you know, no, we'll do, we'll do children of the atom, children of the atom. Number one. Um, hold on. Let me, I got a new tablet, uh, this past week. Um, so I'm no longer having to read my comics on my, like little eight inch rectangle Kindle fire. Oh yeah. I now have a nice, uh, it's a Samsung. Yeah. It's a Samsung galaxy tab S six light, nice. which means it's still kind of cheap, but it's <laughs> it good. And en- it's good enough. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, let's <clears> see. <throat> so, Vita Ayala. Yep. And then writing. Bernard Chang on art, yep. Marcelo My- Maiolo on colors, and VC's Travis Lanham on letters. Uh, so this is like they, they announced, I remember they announced this book um, when I saw the X Men panel in C- at C2E2 last year, AKA the C-COVID. last major <laughs> convention that happened. Um, and you've got a whole, a whole new group of basically we're doing the young Avengers thing, but for X-Men where you've got um, like a Cyclops character and a Archangel and a Nightcrawler, like day crawler. And it was a Marvel, Marvel boy. boy. Or, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, and it's, it's a gambit character. Yeah. Too. And then, yeah. And the uh, gimmick. Gam- gimmick. Yeah. Oh, Marvel guy. Cherub, Cyclops, Last, Daycrawler, and Gimmick. Yeah, these some of these names are terrible. Yeah, but at the same time, number one, we're we're we are sort of fast approaching. Um, you know, it's not peak oil, but like peak superhero name. Like I feel like in the next ten to fifteen years, there will literally be no names left to use. Um, but we also get uh, side appearances from you know guest appearances from Maggot and magma and um pixie pixie i was like i was like she's not an m name that's for sure but yeah they're doing sort of you know the standard superhero thing um they get invited to krakoa and they're like no we got you know we got stuff we got stuff to do um and i mean they're all you know high school teen and i guess this ties into the whole i haven't really been paying much attention to the rest of the marvel universe but the whole like now teenage heroes are outlawed, which I thought we already did that in Civil War, but I guess we're doing it again. These are for minors, and they can actually still superhero, but they need an adult sponsor. So it's a little different. Yeah, it's, you know. Yeah, it's it like, is... yeah, girl, or yeah, kid super, yeah, teenage superheroes are, aren't, um, aren't allowed. Yeah, so... And then, you know, we get a glimpse into a little bit of their personal lives and then the end, which I kind of had to go through, like, look at a little bit again where they are like, all right, we're going to go through a Krakoa portal. And then they don't go through a Krakoa portal like they just pass through it and there's nothing leading what I'm assuming is to be, you know, to note that these kids aren't actually mutants. And that's what I'm wondering. I'm like, are they, have they been depowered or, you know, why would they expect it to work? Are they human and just want to be, want to go to the Island, but they should know that only mutants can go through. So that's what I'm trying to remember or figure out. Like what, what is the deal? 
Or are yeah. they um are they like the like part of that cult <laughs> or whatever the mutant loving cult? I I I feel like what we're looking at, and again, like I don't, I don't and I don't mind that it's ambiguous. I think that you know that definitely makes me invested in wanting to read more. Um, but yeah, it seems like what we're looking at is you know, a bunch of teenagers who are, you know, in one way or the other kind of like outsiders, um, in their regular normal lives. And they've kind of like latched on to this idea of like being a mutant and means that you're like, you know, special and you're going to stand out and you'll, you know, and by virtue of that, you're going to have, uh, you know, a specific place to be. And that's what they want. But, you know, they don't, they're not, you know, so it's, you're, they're basically like, it's, it will be very interesting if this is, if this is the case to see, because it almost, it's, it's, it'd be like cultural appropriation, you know, where it's like humans basically cosplaying as mutants and trying to be like, yeah, no, I can, I, I'll come to Krakoa. I love mutants. You know, my best friend is a mutant. And it's like, that doesn't mean you can come to Krakoa though. That's, that's just for us. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Unless, unless you're married to one of the mutants. I think that's a lot. <laughs> but yeah. yeah. Uh, but North Star's there. husband. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and there's some talk with uh, Wolverine and Cyclops and Nightcrawler and Jean Grey and Storm about what to do with these kids, you know, whether or not they want to reach out and be like, hey, no, seriously, you should you should come. Um, so, yeah, I, it's 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 very it's fascinating to me. I really want to know more about uh, about these characters and what they're doing. And anyone fan fan girling or fanboying on maggot is weird. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was pretty funny because I I mean have aside from background things have we seen maggot in pretty much anything since Krakoa? Not really. Even before that. <laughs> yeah, I mean. But yeah, I mean, you know, you get to Krakoa and it's like, boom, like you are, you know, we got, we got an opportunity to reboot everybody. Everybody's getting a new start. Yes. Mm -hmm. Even you maggot. Um, but yeah. And I, and the art looks great mm -hmm. to me. I don't, I'm not familiar with this artist at all, but it has a real sort of like kinetic energy that does a, a really good job like showing like the youth of these characters and the action and stuff going on. I, I, I know of Bernard Chang. I, I couldn't like point out a particular, like what, like a great work that he's done, but he, yeah, his work has been solid. Uh, who, did, uh, who did wonder woman with, um, was that Rucka? I think that's, Oh, you mean, uh, you're talking about, I think you're talking about Cliff Chang. Cliff yeah. Chang yeah. 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 It's a different Chang. I was in a ballpark. Yeah, the, the, <laughs> there's a there's an eye in that Chang. <laughs> but but yeah, like I I think it's cool. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm of the I don't know if we're in the second wave or third wave of Hickman X Men titles at this point. Um, because we've got yeah, because we've got Way of X and X Core coming out pretty soon. Yeah. And then after the Hellfire Gala, they are relaunching X Men with a new number one. Uh, come, mm, all right. By um, by um, Jerry Duggan, and I forgot who the artist is. Then there is a um, secret title by Hickman. And what was the third thing? There's three. I think there's three titles coming out of the gala. Um. Yeah, that's all I got right now. I'll look it up, but yeah, there is some information of what's coming after. But I'm glad this like, isn't like a story at a time, like like something like a future, a future storyline or something where it's like these are the kids. Yeah. Of the X. Yeah, we don't, we don't, we don't need that 
ain't nobody got time for that. Yeah, exactly. So I'm I'm glad it's sort of in present day. Although, yeah, part of me is just like these guys are, and, and they're like of all places they're in New York, and like if 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 it if it could like it couldn't be easier to get, you know, to find the, these mutants mm-hmm. and get to them. I mean, I guess since you're not in New York, your school isn't in New York anymore. But it just seems like, like that that was the the mutant mecca for so long. Like, well, yeah, and they I mean they do make a point of saying, "Oh man, these kids aren't these kids aren't on Cerebro. They must be doing a really good job hiding themselves." Right. And it's like, nah, they uh, they just ain't mutants, son. They uh, that's just. Uh, or maybe they're taking You're, some kind of mutant growth hormone or something. Yeah, exactly. Possibility. Yeah, yeah. So there's a lot of, I mean, they've got cool costumes. So, um, and now granted, I know we're, it's not like the, you know, the movies where it's either the costumes show up magically with no explanation or there's a big deal about what's going on with the costume. But, but like uh, they even mentioned like the gimmick girl, like she, um, She's like oh a, yeah, you're she's right. She's like a yeah, cosplayer, she, right? Yes, like, yeah. When she, she made the yeah. costumes. Yeah, she's like so. Yeah, okay. That's because oh, what I was going for was like maybe their outfits give them their powers. But yeah, no, you're right. She's sort of their um, clothier or what have you. So yeah, this is this is going to be interesting. This is going to be real interesting to see where these kids end up because you know if they get find out that they're not mutants it makes you wonder if you know the rest of the x-men are gonna be like yeah man this isn't cool um or uh or just like uh go get on go call kitty go hang out on the boat <laughs> we appreciate that you guys are fans yeah but um you know, yeah, thanks, we, uh, but no thanks. Yeah. So looking, I was doing a quick little search there. This is post or I guess during reign of X, we've got our children of the atom. We've got our way of X, which is coming out in April, uh, X core, which is in May, June is hellfire gala. Uh, July is that new X-Men number one. And then there are two classified, projects one uh leah williams valeria shitty project in august oh, and they're then taking, they're taking him off of the shield book, uh, off sword book. Mm-hmm. Ah, a but then and then in september is jonathan hickman and we aren't even telling you who the artist is i wonder if that's going to be uncanny if they're finally going to bring back uncanny I would almost say that this means we have too many X Men titles, but the sheer lack of misses they've had with launching new X Men stuff is remarkable. Well, some of the series that have been announced are also limited. Like, I think X Core is going to be a limited series. Um, yeah, and, and and cable like is coming to its natural end. I think like what on twelve. Yes. yes. So. But yeah, so in terms of you know this, so this month's new number one, um. Well done. Well done, everyone involved. Yeah, definitely has sparked my interest, and look forward to see what these kids are are up to. All right. All right. You got next pick. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, how about uh, we're gonna go and talk about Hellions number ten, confirmed. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Uh, yeah, this <laughs> this issue is wild. Um, like you know, like every time I see our arcade lately or it's it just in general usually when i see arcade my eyes roll and i'm just like oh god this guy mm-hmm. but ever since avengers arena he's just like 
he's kind of an interesting guy, character. Or they, they end up having like an interesting storyline with him. Yeah, they he he definitely seems like he's become one of those characters um in, in a way than like like Mr. Sinister, uh, where at some point someone was like, you know what? This guy's mad boring. Um, I'm going to give him a little bit more of an interesting personality and it just works yeah. and takes off. Cause it's like Mr. Sinister from the eighties. He wasn't the, you know, foppish cape wearing dandy that is also like a major asshole. Like, no, he was just like, he was practically like a random X-Men villain number eight. And you know, now he's delightful. And then, you know, that's what we're, you know, that's what happened with, uh, with arcade apparently. Cause this shit is wild. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and I mean the fact that, well, one, he has a thing called the murder chair, <laughs> which, uh, that might be the, the episode title. <laughs> uh, but yeah, and then like yeah, the whole there's a there's a whole bit in the beginning where because he has, he, you know, he has mastermind, uh, with him, so he has somebody far away watching surveillance and monitoring everything, and so he's just saying confirmed. <laughs> yeah, everything he's, just yeah, to he's... make sure he like uh, mastermind's not messing with him also. Yeah, he's yeah he's basically narrating what he does. And then having that person confirm, yeah. But the but the one that made me laugh was uh, was Mister Sinister uh, talking back, and then he's mm-hmm. like, "Am I am I supposed to confirm that?" <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, "No." Yeah, and Mister Sinister's like, "I'm being assaulted by a Chucky doll." Confirmed. <laughs> and Arcade just like smacks him in the face. Yeah. Yeah, then then it yeah then it gets super dark, and like, yeah. he starts pulling his teeth, and you're just like, oh god, this turned into saw. <laughs> yeah, and you know, and it's one of those things too where it's like, and because it's Mister Sinister, you're like, eh, I'll allow it. Yeah, yeah, he's kind of a dick. <laughs> like, he he kind of had it coming. He's done so much worse to so many people, and and. Uh, Oh, I never, I never mentioned Creative Team. Um, it's a uh, Zeb Wells, uh, Steven Segovia. Who else? Uh, where's that? Page? David Curiel on colors, yeah. Ariana and Ariana Maher on letters. Cool, thanks. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, the art is still so good, and and Mojo Psylocke is creepy as fuck. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. There's like, a lot of in my like, nightmares. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like the 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 two sides of kind of like giving them, you know, giving the Hellion people something like like a nice thing. Like, oh, you know, Havoc is reunited with Madeline Pryor, and she, you know, actually likes him and everything. Um, and then, you know, uh, Quanon's with her daughter and it's like, yay, it's super sweet. And then, you know, arcades like not nah, fuck them up, fam. Yeah. <laughs> and then they just turn everything, you know, like empath was being, you know, the little shit that empath always is. And then it's like, Hey, here's everyone he's ever messed with about ready to beat his ass. Um, and Havoc apparently like he, he's really into, you know, subbing for Madeline Pryor. So, I mean, mm-hmm. good for him. I'm not, I'm not here to kink shame, you know, honestly, like if Madeline Pryor is the love of your life, I really hope that you're into like, you know, collars and chains and kneeling and all that jazz. Yep. I just, I do like the fact that they picked up on Mastermind's other daughter um, that arcade has captives, so he he may be their way out of this situation as well. Yeah, yeah, I was wondering because I, I I was I was like, yeah, wasn't there like a female mastermind daughter person on like was it Mike Carey's run or something? Mm-hmm. Well, that one is already on Kakoi. He actually has two daughters. There's Mastermind and then there's Lady Master. Well, 
his daughters are named Mastermind and Lady Mastermind. So there is actually two of them. <laughs> That's not confusing. Yeah, I was gonna say, what are you, George Foreman? Like Jesus Christ. Come on, man. I believe it was completely by accident though. I think um one was created in the Wolverine Gambit Victims uh miniseries, which is Loeb and, and uh Sale. And then the other one I believe Claremont invented during his run in Marvel didn't quite realize that there was already another sister, so that's how you ended up with two. I I also like the murder world memo on this where yeah uh, yeah <laughs> where it's just like by the way there is a person that's a, that's an egg so like just don't worry about it point three when i say i'm so furious i'm going to scissor kick you in the throat this is not an invitation to stay per- you know this is an invitation to stay perfectly still while i scissor kick you in the throat This is not an invitation to flinch or dodge said scissor kick and put me at great physical rest. (laughs) (laughs) To whom it may concern. (laughs) So basically arcades running an Amazon distribution center. Pretty much. This is, this is only slightly better. (laughs) Yeah. Like only a little Amazon. Yeah. I say this as we are streaming on, on the platform streaming service that is owned by said by amazon by yeah. amazon overlords yeah you know what i'm i'm gonna pull a john oliver and be like you know what business daddy come shut us down then yeah come on jeff <laughs> do it a double dog dare you you know you're what no but seriously you're welcome to come on the show anytime mm-hmm. <laughs> i would love for jeff bezos to talk about yeah. x-men comics absolutely we've got we've got questions and i feel like jeff has answers so let's let's make he's stepping down, you know, he's going to have a lot more free time on his hands. <laughs> Damn right. <laughs> uh, or Rockin' Mr. Magic just wrote in the chat, LOL, way to trash Amazon on Twitch. Hell yeah, that's how we yeah. roll. I'm just saying, you know, <laughs> what are they going to do? You know what? Shut us down. Mm-hmm. Do it. Go ahead. Shut us down. You know, we'll 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 get out there and be like, hey, all we wanted to do is talk about X-Men comics and Amazon shut us down. Mm hmm. Hurtful. Yeah, they're trying to cancel us. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's like, uh, go ahead. Oh no, no, I was gonna make another joke, but we've done enough of that. All right, we've got serious business. That's right. To get to back to you, Corn. Back to me. Let me look at the list again. All right, so. Uh, let's see. Let's jump into X-Force number 18, written by Benjamin Percy with art by Gary Brown, guest artist, I'm guessing, Goro FX on the colors, and Joe Carmagna on the letters. Um, I think this is probably the first misstep we had on art with any of these X-Books. I really wasn't much of a fan. It's not terrible, but it definitely doesn't live up to the previous artists we had on the book. Um, yeah. You know, there's quite a noticeable difference. And I don't know if it was just rushed or a time thing, but. And, I mean, like uh, the style, or maybe it's just the colors that look similar no, to the old one. No. But, but I mean, yeah, the, his face, this person's faces aren't as good for sure. I do think they have the same colors, which helps bring it together. But just the art is just not, it's not there. I mean, yeah. this page with Sage and everything, it's. Not looking too hot. Um, to be fair, she's like plastered, <laughs> drunk. <laughs> so true. But um, I last issue, I believe, I thought that Quentin was actually still captive, and they were kind of messing with his head. But it does seem like this Quentin is himself, and he is outside of the influence of the. Uh, I don't know what organization was it. Peacock, the the whatever that organization is. So his self-awareness, his his opening up of his own mind and, and taking control, more control of himself was actually a real thing, which is good. It's good to see him step up now uh, in his new costume and everything. So, yeah, it does seem like there is a clone of him, brainwashed clone of him out there causing all kind of problems and killing people at, probably at the behest of this organization. Um, it was kind of vicious to see that Beast and Sage were actually affected by 
said uh, villain and Sage actually had to put Beast out of his misery as part of their protocol. She snaps his neck. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This is the this is kind of the thing that like I, this was the theme that I noticed on a lot of these books this month is that there's a lot of gratuitous characters dying. And I realize like I, I have no problem with the whole like thing with the five and the resurrection protocols. Like that's cool. Like I think it's an interesting device to use, but I feel like we're getting to sort of overuse territory. Like granted X-Men die and come back all the time. But I don't know. It just seems like this month, it just seemed really excessive. But maybe, maybe they're doing that on purpose, though. I mean, it would not surprise me in the slightest if they were like, all right, hey, we've, you know, we're setting stuff up for later. But, you know, and I made the joke at the beginning, like when we were doing this, that it's like, oh, man, I got a hangnail. That's really tough. I'll just put a bullet in my brain and they'll just, you know, resurrect me back without the hangnail. Yeah. But we're almost kind of getting to that point because, you know, X-Men books, you know, those guys got killed off, brought back. Um, in this one, Beast gets, you know, they're like, oh, he had a stroke and he's, you know, not doing well. So the protocol is we're going to kill him and resurrect him. Um, and like, so like, it's a lot of, but like, I feel like if people could get killed this easily in comics, which that's totally realistic, I'm down for that they should have been dying in much higher quantities before this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's sort of where sort of almost like the opposite where you're just like, there's no way this person could survive this. Right. It's the other way around. where just like, there's no way they're, they died that quickly. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I definitely like, I dig what they're doing story wise with like Quentin's arc and that this is, you know, this arc does seem to be, uh, created by the fact that Quentin has died a lot. <laughs> More times than we've even seen. Yeah. On the page. He, he's definitely the Kenny, you know, and I, and I, and I, and I, and I get it. I mean, if like you were able to be resurrected pretty much consequence free, you probably would be a little bit more lazy. It's like, you know, when you play video games, you know, like, yeah, I'm going to make my, you know, Red Dead Redemption dude like yeah, he's just going to ride his horse down this like steep cliff face. Oh, he fell and died. All right, whatever. You know, if you knew you had one life and then like, that's it. The game is over forever. You'd be like, no, I'm going to be nice. going to go down the mountain on the path on a nice, slow trot. But I mean, I don't, and sort of the, the whole thing with Beast sort of makes sense, though. Like, the, you know, if anybody, you know, it's like Sage and Beast probably have the most knowledge. Or maybe Cypher <laughs> might be the other one. Or just like, yeah, no one is allowed to get into the minds of these people. <laughs> valuable information yeah Yeah. we're running running out of time so fetch all right um oof let's do let's do x factor number eight which um talk about wild stuff man yeah this is another this is another wild stuff candidate book for sure. And all right, so uh, X Factor 8 written by Leah Williams with art by David Baldion, uh, colors by Israel Silva and letters by VCs uh, Joe Caramagna. Um before you before you start, uh, can I say that I never want to wake up in the middle of the night and see eye boy standing in the hall in the hallway yeah because nah, holy dude. crap that is creepy as fuck. yeah yeah because this i mean this book absolutely does like 
you're you're in like 80s horror movie neighborhood yeah. right now. This is like Freddy versus Jason versus the Morgan yes. um, who, you know, has shown up. And now I, I will admit it has been like, you know, I didn't go back and reread the last issue. So I was a little kind of out of touch as to exactly where because I felt like the last issue dropped us off someplace differently than where we started. And then it was kind of all over the place, you know, as Morgan was doing her, you know, haunting of Hill House slash the Boneyard deal. Um, but once again, pretty much everyone on the team gets murdered. And it's just like, all right, pop those folks back out. And we'll see, you know, we'll see what happens. Mm hmm. Um, I think it's everyone except iBoy and Prodigy. Yep. Um, and it's so it, I'm glad that they're moving forward with the whole, you know, what's been going on with Siren and the Morrigan thing. Um, because it looks like at the end of the issue, they kind of get her at bay. Um, and, you know, next issue we'll sort of be wrapping this up. But. But yeah, this was a pretty wild ride into nightmare horror territory right here. So kiss your naked, gooey husband first. <laughs> yeah. And I will say I really like the way uh, David Balian did the sort of this is how like I boys perception. The like the constant like other like little circles and eyes mm -hmm. of other vision. Uh, that they have and how freaky it was for him that it was just like, you know, he can't see anything. You know, he can't see this person, you know, this thing that's going around killing people. And also, I think it's a nice touch to use kanji when uh, Dokken is speaking in Japanese. Mm -hmm. Well done. Yeah, well done. I, was, I was trying to look through all the circles to see if there's any kind of like Easter egg type things, but I didn't I didn't really catch anything. And uh, uh, it's probably not a secret, but Polaris won the vote, so she's going to be one of the members on the X New X Men book. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, I saw that tempo was out. Ooh. I, I just hope they don't pull her from this book because she really fits in here. Agreed. I really like her here. And if they do pull her from the book, I hope they pull in someone else like Tempo or Marrow or like one of these other sort of like underserved characters that, you know, we hadn't really seen much of until, you know, they were eligible for voting. You know, I hope we see one of them take the place. Yeah. But it's good. I mean, this, this still remains a, you know, one of the top tier uh, X books they've got going on right now. <laughs> yeah, and the, the whole thing about the about a second prodigy being out there is is also very interesting. Yeah, that's a really that's a really good sort of like B story that's percolating a little bit, and sort of like the idea, like the natural thing is like, yeah, like what if this original prodigy had not died and he's just out there somewhere? So now, and they address it in some of the you know guide pages. And honestly, yeah. like, I guess if you think about it, like, you know, I, like, I guess how we were sort of com cr complaining or critiquing the whole resurrection thing, like the whole like this whole book revolves around putting rules mm -hmm. to to the whole resurrection thing and, and like trying to like point out the limitations or uh, the loopholes or the things that are wrong with it. And then so. I you know that's I guess that's part of why another reason why I like I mean besides this is just a wild cast and they're everybody like all the like the 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 interactions are a, a lot of fun and it's a, it's an exciting book but yeah yeah I'm glad that they have a book that is like specifically for because this is such a wild concept yeah you know that they're able to do that agreed. All right. Yep. Um. Six. Yeah. Let's see. What else? What do we have left? Um. She sword. I keep saying shield tonight. Uh, shield, Excalibur, Cable. You just said shield again. <laughs> I mean sword. <laughs> <Damn it. laughs> um. 
let's just uh let's go through demon days x men number oh, yeah. one yeah and... that's a book that came out yeah <laughs> um gorgeous book yeah absolutely like, looks great exactly um the story and art by peach uh momoko and yeah so i was just like oh so this isn't part of <laughs> of what we're we're going through really no. or at least in the at least yeah at least in the beginning um it's kind of like its own just stylized um yeah but it, yeah you know sort of like how i was mentioning that that children of the atom wasn't just its own like x-men from the future thing mm -hmm. like that this is the sort of i had that same feel for this book we're just like yeah i don't got time for no alternate storylines <laughs> but it, yeah, yeah. It, it looks great yeah i mean like the 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 art is it's very stylized but it's also it, it, it's really well done but it's like yeah we've got like a red oni hulk and a venom snake just it's kind of all over the place yeah which is interesting if it's like i want I, I want it to either be more about the x-men to explain why this is an x-men book or its complete own thing that isn't x-men yeah and it's entirely possible because, like, you know, we go through this whole, like, um, sort of parable, this folk, you know, this thing of folklore about um, the Oni and everything. And then it kind of princess brides us with, oh, this is, uh, you know, Mariko is reading this in a book. And we're in modern day Japan. Yeah. So maybe that, you know, all will become clear in future issues. But yeah. Yeah. I didn't actually read this. I read, I started it, but I don't know what happened. I never finished it. You didn't miss any, but a yeah. whole lot. Yeah. Again, it's not bad. Like, I'm not saying that it's bad. Yeah. It's just was not what I expected. And, you know, that's on me, I guess. But man, uh, Mark, uh, Mark Brooks did an amazing cover with, with this, uh, the, I guess this Psylocke character. Oh, yes. That's and my it, wallpaper on my and wall. it's so gorgeous. Oh, I don't, I don't have that one. So now I'm going to have to go yeah, look it up. I will, I will send it to you in the chat. I do think. Yeah, it is gorgeous. Um, I'll once I find it. So, okay, we'll we'll go and move on. Uh, and yep, I'll... two minutes to the lightning round. All right, turn your turn, Gordon. Or oh, it is me, isn't it? Yeah. Um. Okay. Oh let's snap! Just, let's just do sword. Um. Hey, I got it right that time. Yay! Um, let's do sword. I just, I just dropped that. Um, I just dropped that. Yeah, uh, yeah, I just found it. That is fly as hell. So gorgeous. So Al Ewing, writer, and I'll probably make that the art for the episode art. Uh, Valero Skidi on art. Uh, Al Ewing writing. Marte Gracia on colors. And Ar Ariana Mar on letters. Um, this book is just gorgeous i don't mm -hmm. think the king and black thing isn't really hitting me very hard i mean cable's been taken over and he's in krakoa causing all kind of problems but um we do focus on their kind of backup plan that brand has to recover the five um and whiz kid of course comes in and just kind of shows you what makes him cool yeah he gundams the hell out of that tank mm-hmm so if any, you know, Fallen Angels miniseries from back in the day, read and you'll, you'll see him there. But we also learned some, a little bit more about Edie here as well as how his powers um, work. And then my girlfriend, he gets in there and gets pretty raw as well. But 
explain to me how Edie basically makes a like Sharunkin fireball out of a, a sun. <laughs> it's just a great adaptation of how his powers work with folding space and, and things like that. Yeah, he just folded the sun into you. Yeah, like it's it's wild. And again, not to put too fine of a point on it, we got two characters that just get killed off immediately. Yeah, that was to be fair, it was Fabian Cortez. <laughs> so. Yeah, exactly. And but apparently, we're going to be going more in depth into that because at the end of the issue, Magneto's like, "I'm gonna need to talk to this dude," so we got to bring him back. All right, ten minute, uh, ten minute warning. Okay. I was just like, is it over? <laughs> 10 minute warning. Yeah. Yeah. So it's going to be interesting to see what huh, Magneto's going to have to discuss with Fabian. Yeah. I, but could, yeah but... I could go without all this King and Black stuff. I think that that's the mm-hmm. one thing that kind of took me out of this. But wasn't needed. Yeah. Especially like issues three and four are King and Black things. Like, yeah. Like, you know, like, come on, y'all. You know, like, we could have. Like I guess this could have been just an a regular alien invasion of some kind where they went to a planet, you know. Like this didn't have to be a King of Black thing. But I mean, yeah, it is brilliantly written, and because I like the the whole, um, yeah, this is our backup plan, not just to save the five, but to save all. Excuse me, all of mutants. Mm Because it's like we're going to be bringing their samples and we got, uh, you know, Mentallo over here is going to make us a half-assed Professor X and we'll just run from there. And this damn last page with this redacted crap, I mean, there's only like three (laughs) things you can make out in this whole damn page. Um, One is probably Amelia Vaught, who was uh, Xavier's ex-girlfriend who could turn herself to mist. Um snark war which are those aliens that we learned about and then i'm guessing soul is supposed to be for our solar system or our planet or whatever mm-hmm. uh, hopefully we'll get a little bit of that like every issue where they explain some of it but yeah sunfire and uh <laughs> and fabian got it pretty bad yep all right but how right. how cool of a name is krakoa's son that's pretty cool. <laughs> it's pretty rad. Yeah. Okay. Um, um, what's left? Uh, I guess Excalibur is. Yeah. Or is there... We have we have Cable, Excalibur, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. and X Men Legends. And of those three, I'm going to do Excalibur uh, because again, this book continues to be, uh, in my opinion, it is definitely stepping up from where it had been in the past where we were sort of like, eh, you know, where it was basically doing like, you know, 10 of swords, uh, pre-lifting. And then now, so this, this issue is the, Hey, we're going to, we're going to get Betsy Braddock back. And, you know, we've got Quinnon as, you know, pretty much the only person who can track her down and, reason with her because of how just absolutely messed up these two's lot their you know their lives have been together um and then at the very end you know we definitely we get more you know more thing from the uh you know council of uh betsy braddock's and by the way this issue was written by teeny howard with art by marcus toe with color er, colors by eric arseniega and letters by vc's ariana maher um so yeah like it, it it looks great um we get more um angry goose captain britain mm-hmm. which is always a plus um and then at the end we get a nice uh, a nice flashback villain of malice the absolute total dick bag possessing lady that if i remember correctly she had been all up in Psylocke's business way back when right before uh like the fall of the mutant stuff that chris claremont did But yeah, it's good stuff. I like I like where this book is going now. Agreed. 
yeah. I like, uh, uh, yeah, I like Psylocke's costume in this, too. It's pretty rad. Yeah. Costume design's pretty cool. And so, yeah, I just, I just have positive things to say about it. Yeah, it, it's... I, uh, like my, I guess my one complaint with with uh, Teeny Howard, at least in the previous issues, was that it was all over the place, and this this uh, the story was very focused, and, and and like to the point, and and like I agree with you, like it, it the book was pretty much just a setup of the Ten of Swords event, and now it's finally get, and I do like uh. You know, uh, Richter just you know like like the diagram of him just kind of frantically scratching <laughs> people's names and trying to <laughs> trying to Around. yeah do like sorcery stuff. And he's just like I'm trying, everybody. I fasted for this, so he's like he's hangry as hell. Yeah. While he's trying to figure all this stuff out. I'm so hungry. <laughs> but yeah, so, I yeah. I also. I also dig this book. X Men is in a really good spot right now. Mm-hmm. Quality do, books. Do we want to? Do we want to? Do we have time for whoever's next to do Legends and Cable and or Cable? Yeah, we should um, do Cable. We'll just, yes. Yeah, we'll just finish out Cable. Where of the two. Oh, <laughs> Jerry Duggan writing, Phil Noto on art, Joe Sabino on letters, uh, Tom Muller on design. Anyway. Um, I I had a, this question real quick where I was just like, wait, is is the the cuckoo sister like you know messing with Cable and <laughs> and uh, Quentin? And I was like, no, but this is Phoebe's in this one, and Esme is in the or is Esme isn't yes the other way around yeah Esme's in this book, and Phoebe is the one that's with Quentin. I love the fact that Cable had to dip out on her. And, yeah. And, and was like, the boy would rather throw himself into the ocean than be with you at the moment. Yeah. Uh, it's something weird with these cuckoos and telepaths because, you know, one is after Quentin. This one's mm-hmm. after Cable. It's just like, what are they What are they actually up to? Yeah, they're trying to get some of them good summers jeans. Jeans. Yeah. Or this, uh, oh. or, you know, just... Connecting on, on the astral plane. But um, I love the magic scene in here. Mm-hmm. Where they're torturing Nast... What is his name? Nasterist? Yeah, right. Nazareth. Yeah, yeah. With Nazareth. 500 miles on recorder. <laughs> oh, it was hilarious. Um, and, and I love that character. Yeah, and it, and it made perfect sense to go after Wildside. Or just like, yeah, you, you go after the Mutant Liberation Front if you're trying to look yeah. for Stripe. That makes perfect sense. I don't yeah, know why I, I do, didn't think of that before. Yeah, I do like that they, you know, they've sort of like naturally touched on people like, yeah, like Magic, like um, uh, Hope Summers, who, you know, people are who are natural, you know, naturally connected to Cable to be like, yeah, no, this is, yeah, this is what we're doing. You know, oh, that guy's having trouble. All right. I guess I know him. He's, he's sort of in some ways, my adopted dad kind of in the future or will be. So I guess I'll help him out. But they're, and then, yeah, the, the, I was not expecting them wanting or getting ready to, to resurrect the old self again. Yeah, I don't, I don't know how that's, that's going to work. And yeah, one or the other, man. I don't, I don't want to have, I don't have more than one cable out there. <laughs> next, uh, the next, it says next cable bundle. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. One, of, yeah, one of them's going to have to change their name to Satellite. Like that's, <laughs> yeah, you know. AT and T. I did get some, get some play lately. He was just in New Mutants, and now here, here he is here. Mm-hmm. And I was just waiting for Cable to say something about it's like you know everyone knows you're not Patch right <laughs> everybody everybody knows you're yeah. Wolverine like come again on. <laughs> this is hands down the worst superhero secret identity and yes I'm counting Clark Kent in that exactly 
it's hilarious too. Like at, at least Clark Kent fixes his hair differently. Yeah. I, I, I love the fact that Cable's calling in his marker too that he won in the tournament when he beat Wolverine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was a good callback. All right, we got 30 seconds, so we might as well just wrap it up. Um, X Men Legends, check it out if you're interested in the old school X Men story, story beats that are left hanging because they kind of answer some stuff there. Do they, though? Yeah, they do. Do they? I mean, I was not thrilled with how it ended. I'll, well, they, I'll leave it at that. They had to fix it so it didn't affect anything current, but they do give you a nice little. Uh, is this the issue where they give you the chart with the family tree? Yeah, it is. Yeah. But I just, I just, to me, like the going, you know, the the whole notion of this is like, oh, we're going to go back and we're going to like fill in the gaps on this stuff. And then, and I understand you're right because they should have known this, like if this has actually happened or whatever. But to at the end of the two issues be like, and then everyone's mind was erased. Like it's right up there with like, when you find out that um, principal Skinner is actually Armin Tanzarian. (laughs) And then they're like, we're all never going to be taught. Like, you know, we'll never, you know, no one is the talk of this again under penalty of torture. Like that's, um, that's all I get from this. (laughs) Mm -hmm. All right. You know, just like uh, Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver aren't aren't mutants. <laughs> yeah, don't get me started. <laughs> well, what Viet can get us started with is what are we covering next episode? All right. Uh, well, EMX episode ninety four. We will talk about the books of April twenty twenty one. Indeed. We are proud members of a few podcast networks where you can find us and a host of other podcasts. Do check out the co- hashtag the collected net on Twitter. Um, where can people find you on Twitter, Thatch? They can find me on the Twitters, the Instagrams, and the and the uh, the Tumblers at Demon Weasel. And you can also find me uh, at my website, www.demonweasel.com, where if you're and you know if you're not doing the shows yet, uh, completely understandable. I'm vaccinated. Hopefully, most of the people that are vaccinated or that are there are vaccinated. You can uh, pick up some of uh, some of my stuff via via that website. Um, and you can also, you know, if you want to throw a few bucks my way, you can uh, find me at patreon.com slash the demon weasel. Brandy. Mm-hmm. And listeners can find me at EMPcast on Twitter. Are you, um, is SE Comic Con this coming weekend? Yes. <laughs> and yeah, that's right. I will be, um, uh, at. South Carolina Comic Con, uh, the 17th and 18th of April. Um, so that should be, I'm actually leaving uh, tomorrow. Anyway, it's Greenville, about, it's about like a South five Carolina. A, yeah, it's about a five and a half hour drive, but that's, uh, you know, that's near, near my alma mater. Yeah. That, yeah. And I think I told you there's a Krispy Kreme right outside that convention center. Just oh snap! FYI, <laughs> yeah, and my air and my Airbnb, which is basically like one of those sheds that you get from Lowe's with mm-hmm. a shower and like a cot in it. Mm-hmm. Um, so that'll be wild. But hey, you know what? I ain't fancy, but what I am is cheap. So, <laughs> oh, well, good luck with that. <laughs> um, yeah, people can find me uh, at Comedian Viet on on all the social medias and uh, and. I, I do a Twitch stream every Tuesday and Sunday where I work on custom toys and yeah, and occasionally stream a podcast that you're also <laughs> listening to. <laughs> what? Yes. All right. And with that, we are out. We will see you guys next month. Bye-bye. Bye, Bye everybody. All right, I will check you guys later. I got some dinner to eat and some puppies to play with. Fantastic. Yep. Right. Me I'll talk too. to you guys tomorrow. All right, peace. All right, bye bye everybody. Bye. Uh, wait, yeah, real quick. Yes. Um, are we still streaming? Yes. You want me to turn it off? Okay. Okay, we're yes, turning please. it off. All right.
Goodbye, people in the chat. Thank you for lurking and hanging out. Uh, I, for the po folks in the chat, I might be uh, doing a morning, morning stream tomorrow. Uh, but we'll see. But if not, Sunday. Okay. Bye.